You know, it's very, obviously Philippines is very popular for dating. And I think two main things. Well, number one is English. Let's just, get, let's just 100%. So you can actually communicate or at least foreigners can communicate with Filipinos. Mm -hmm. And number two, I think there's a lot more uh, Western influence as far as movies, music, and things like that mm -hmm. in the Philippines. I think it's an infrastructure thing. I also think there's a lot of cars here, you know? And sure. then, but then the, the streets just aren't set up for it, you know? And it's just, a, it's just a clash. So it's just, it's tough. So if you had to pick one of those countries to live in for the next 10 years, you couldn't go oh, anywhere man. else, you're stuck there for That's 10 years, person. what country would you pick? Man, if I had to, oh, it's tough. How's it going, guys? Today, I got my friend Aaron on the channel. He's going to be talking about life, traveling all over the place. Let's talk. So, Aaron, super good to have you on the channel. Thanks yeah. for being here. Yeah, thank you, thank you. So tell us a bit more about uh, yourself. You have a YouTube channel that I really love. Uh, check out Aaron's channel in the description below. Been binge watching it lately. Uh, just great uh, travel vlog. But where are you from? How long have you been traveling? Uh, so I am from Tucson, Arizona. Yeah, that's where I was born. Uh, I lived in Arizona for until I was about a teenager, finished high school in Washington, and then mm -hmm. I've lived kind of on the West Coast through my 20s. Yeah. Nice, yeah. yeah. I'm from California. Everybody's leaving to Arizona or Texas, yeah, yeah. it seems. And I was there for a few years in California. Okay, yeah. nice, nice. So you, you've you been traveling around a lot, it looks like, looking at your vlog. Uh, what mm -hmm. countries have you been to? So I've been to England, Mexico, Hong Kong, Japan, South Korea, Taiwan, Vietnam, Philippines, Indonesia, um, Singapore. Oh, I forgot about that one. Um, Thailand. And I think there's one or two I forgot. But. Did you mention <laughs> Malaysia? Oh, Malaysia. Yeah, Malaysia. Malaysia. I saw a lot of vlogs there. Yeah, Malaysia. Pretty much all the ocean, ocean uh, countries and then, yeah. Very, uh, very cool. So you've been a lot of different places. Uh, I got some work to catch up with you. Want to talk to you about some of the things that you liked most and maybe some of the things you didn't like as much in some of those different countries. Yeah, yeah. So tell me, what are maybe the top three countries where you've spent the most amount of time? So the top three has been um, Vietnam, Philipp Vietnam seven months, Philippine total, accumulatively six months, and then uh, Indonesia about Two and a half months, roughly. Okay. Yeah. So out of all of those, is there one that sticks out overall as just being the most memorable that you feel most at home at? Uh, it's tough. You know, it's, I honestly really love Indonesia. I spent a lot of time there. And, that, mm -hmm. and when I first traveled, I went to Indonesia first, actually. Mm -hmm. So it kind of has a little bit more of a special place in my heart just because it was like my first experience. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I really like the Philippines. And, and, and a lot of it, honestly, is just because, you know, you can connect more people. Sure. Because of the language. Sure. You know. So if you had to pick one of those countries to live in for the next 10 years, you couldn't go oh, anywhere man. else. You're stuck there for That's 10 years. Person. What country would you pick? So is that just for lit? Like, is that <clears throat> working, like business, living, or just kind of for me? Whatever you do for 10 years. Oh, in, in, in this area, in this region? Anywhere in the world. Oh, anywhere in the world. That you've been. Oh, that I've been. Okay. Um, man, if I had to, oh, it's tough. If, if I would say maybe Philippines, Vietnam is really on a super steep trajectory right now as far mm -hmm. as the economy and stuff. So the country is just blew, blowing up. Vietnam would be a great place. I don't know. I mean, Malaysia is good, too. So tough decision. <laughs> yeah. How about this? Say that people are watching and they yeah. want to go somewhere for a two-week vacation. Uh -huh. Out of everywhere that you've traveled, where would you recommend just for a vacation? Oh, for a vacation? Uh, mm -hmm. I would highly recommend, definitely the Philippines is great. And I think Thailand is pretty good, too. You okay. know? I, it's not my favorite country by any means, but... It's really set up for tourism. They have the beaches. They have the city. It's easy to get around there. Sure. You know, and I, I would say that'd be a good landing place for people. Okay. And then the Philippines is really close to that. I get it. I get it. So out of all the places that you've traveled, where would you say people are the most friendly? The most friendly? You know, everyone's pretty pretty dang friendly in, in Southeast Asia. Um, mm -hmm. You know, obviously the Philippines is known for being the friendliest. And I think a lot of that has to do with because people speak English here. Sure. You can talk, you know, whereas, um, but I'm shocked, honestly. People in Thailand are really nice. Vietnam, even, which I was really surprised by. They're, they're really cool there. Yeah. Uh, it's just you can't ever talk to them, really, you know, unless 
I, I started learning a little Vietnamese, but uh, yeah, I would say uh, Philippines is probably number one, you know, I would say, but they're all pretty close, to be honest. You know? Sure, sure. Yeah. So in terms of communicating in English, what is it probably Philippines, Malaysia, Singapore, the easiest? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely Philippines, number one, Singapore, Malaysia, probably number two. Sure, yeah, I sure. Think Taiwan, but, but even then, I was surprised in Singapore, a lot of people, they didn't, they weren't, it's not like everyone was just fluent. I think yeah. a lot of them could read a lot. It's just with the Chinese accent in there a lot. Sure. It was actually harder than I thought it was going to be. At the time. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah. yeah. I've been there, it was for a shorter trip, uh, but. Did you have the same experience? Uh, I was a little bit clustered because I was some, with some friends from oh, okay. Australia that were living and working there. Oh, okay. So I got to go back and, and, <laughs> and check it out. Where would you say that it's been the hardest place to just like get to know and communicate with people? The hardest? Oh, probably Vietnam. I get it. Yeah. I mean, I, I, you really have to start. If you, well, if you want to talk to people there, you got to learn the language, obviously. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So. So I've heard with Vietnam that they made it a little bit harder for people to go there for longer terms, you know, before it really seemed like a, a hotspot for expats wanting to go to live there. Mm -hmm. um, definitely maybe number one on my bucket list of places that I still want to go. Oh, you haven't been yet? I haven't been oh, yet. Oh, okay. Yeah. So speaking of Vietnam, I mean, some of the things that I hear of that are amazing there are like the food, okay. you know, I, I hear accommodations are very reasonable price and... Mm -hmm. Uh, all the rest, you know, where would you say out of everywhere you've been is your favorite food? Let's say maybe your top two or three places. Oh, top two or three. You know, I really like Indonesian food. Oh. Yeah, I really do. I think uh, I was surprised. The Indonesian food is delicious. I really like Thai food. And I would probably have to say, I'd probably have to say Thailand, to be honest. Okay. Know? Yeah. Okay. Vietnamese food is great, but it's a lot of the same stuff. Sure. And is a ton of MSG and salt it is, to be honest. And it's good, though, but it's a lot of... I think there's more variety in Thailand. That's kind of my opinion. Yeah. Thai food's great. Yeah. And cheap and yeah, all the rest. Yeah. Yes, yes. So we're in Philippines. Be honest, what do you think of Filipino <laughs> yeah. food? Sorry, you know what's funny? Sorry, Filipinos. I, I know. Everybody I watch, they always... The Filipino food gets such a bad rap, you know? And that's, def that's definitely the number one complaint, I think, about the Philippines for foreigners in the sure. foreign community. And I don't know, I get it. I'm a fan of vinegar. And I think there's a lot of vinegary foods in the Philippines. So I like it. Sure. You know, I sure. so, but I can see why people don't, you know, they don't really like it. So Definitely an acquired taste. So for me, <laughs> I'm a huge fan of the Philippines, but the food. I mean, if we're talking about fresh fruit, like their mango or, yeah, yeah. you know, both of us try durian and really, you know, dig it. Oh, yeah. You know, there's a lot of great stuff like that over, but definitely an acquired uh, taste over here. Yeah, no, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, and there is seem to be less options in some other countries. You know, some places are just more. I guess you could call it like a foodie country. You know, for sure. Even even Thailand, I felt like there was just such a huge range of yeah. you know types of foods there. So, what about your your single guy? No, I have a girlfriend right now, actually. Yeah. All right, so I better be careful with this next question. <laughs> yeah. So, just but ask, I'll be honest, <laughs> at, asking for a a, a friend. Uh, you know, what about, you know, dating life in different, you know, countries? countries? Um, you know, I would say, you know, it's very, obviously, Philippines is very popular for dating. And I think two main things. Well, number one is English. That's just, that's just 100%. So you can actually communicate, or at least foreigners can communicate with Filipinos. Mm -hmm. And number two, I think there's a lot more uh, Western influence as far as movies, music, and things like that mm -hmm. in the Philippines. And even a lot of businesses, I sure. think. So it's... I think that's just kind of a more comfortable thing. There's more of a, a slighter mesh, you know, than, than some of the other. Whereas, like, you go to Vietnam and there's a lot less Western influence, you know. Like, sure. You just, and there's a lot more nowadays, and it's still not that much. Sure, so, sure. And, and is your girlfriend from the Philippines or somewhere yeah, else? Yeah, she's actually from Cebu, yeah. All right. Yeah. I think that speaks pretty loud for where the dating's <laughs> the best. But I can expand on a little bit more. Um, I, it is great in Vietnam. You know, the, uh, I think Vietnamese women are very, very, they're still, they don't really date casually there. You know, they pretty much all mm -hmm. want serious. They don't really mess around with that. There always is those pools of people that do you yep. know, date casually. But I would say Vietnam is, uh, is a great place too, you know, and, um, uh, and I would say, but that's pretty much it. I haven't really dated too many other places. So, sure, a little, sure. Yeah. So. so, you know, dating in Vietnam, is that complicated? Just finding someone that could 
you know, communicating English fluently or? Yeah, definitely. I mean, you're, there's a small percentage that speak English and it's kind of, you know, and, and honestly, a lot of people too, they're trying to improve their English. So a lot of, a lot, a lot of women there will go online and try to just talk to guys online, even date them, meet them for coffee, really just practice English. I actually tutored, like legitimately tutored, exchanged money with some mm-hmm. people that I just met off the dating website. Right. You know, they right. were like looking for tutors. So. Yeah, nice. I did that a couple times. I had a couple clients. You know. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's yeah. a new approach to defining a day. Yeah, yeah. And, and when, to be honest, actually, I was like, wait, when I'm doing this wrong, I should just advertise myself as a tutor That's on, right. on the dating website. And right. I did, but then someone reported me for soliciting. I was like, That's uh, not nice. I know? got you. <laughs> Come on, give Aaron a job. Yeah. <laughs> So speaking of that, I mean, what's that, you know, like just in terms of, you know, expenses, you, you know, in each country, are they all similar costs or do you notice any big differences? Yeah, well, obviously, you know, like Hong Kong and, you know, um, Singapore is a lot more expensive, but you will be surprised by how you can find some of the day-to-day goods for less, mm-hmm. you know, like as far as food and things like that. Now, yeah. So what about accommodation in like Hong Kong or Singapore? you remember how much you would pay for... I mean, so the last time I was in Hong Kong was five years ago, mm-hmm. and that was, I was paying like, I think it was $90 US for just a small room Airbnb, and that was like the cheapest one I could find, and I'm sure now it's probably more. Yeah. Um, and then when it was in Singapore, you can, you can get the cheapest thing I saw, you could get a, you could stay in like a hostel bed, and I think it was still like 70, 80 bucks. Yeah, that's big difference. Bed. Yeah. yeah. So, but you can get a hotel for about 150 in, in Singapore. Yeah. You know? But in the Philippines, I find that there's there's a lot more variety. If you want something that's kind of decent, mm-hmm. you know, it, it could add up here as well. So, I mean, here, yeah. are you running Airbnb as well or? No. So I've actually, so right now I'm, I'm uh, they, so my girlfriend actually lived in the U.S. for a while. Mm-hmm. And so she, she has a place here. Uh-huh. So we've been staying at her place here and, um. So she's actually, yeah, so she goes back and forth. But, um, but yeah, as far as the actual renting, like I had rented an IT park before and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, it's surprising. If you want anything good quality, honestly, like yeah. it's, it's, it's clean, doesn't have mold. You know, the Wi-Fi is good, has a TV, has a good working TV. It's more expensive than people think, you know. For, for sure. And even I found, you know, I lived in Cebu City about four years. Now I'm in Davao City you know, a lot of the time. So I kind of go back and forth. It's about 25% more expensive in Davao City for like a condo compared to Cebu City. Really? Yeah, I think there's just less condos in Davao City. Uh, So it really drives the demand up. uh, So, you know, I I found finding a condo in Cebu or Manila is surprisingly cheaper than Davao City. Wow. So if you want to find a house or if, you know, you don't mind traveling a bit in Davao City, then you could get things low, you know, much lower cost there. But Davao so spread out that uh, the the prices could could get jacked up pretty high for in the center. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, but I, I will say, um, you did you ask about the cheapest place? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. So I, I I didn't, but I am now. Oh, okay. So what's the cheapest place? Uh, 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 so I would say right now still probably Vietnam. Now they're all pretty close. This people know they're all in the same bracket. Sure. You know, there's very. But I would say if you just wanted to go bang for your buck, just across the line, you know, apples to apples. I would say Vietnam, Thailand, Thailand, and even though Thailand's been going up, they, I don't, it's still great prices. And I, don't, I think it's just because they have so much inventory there. Yeah. You know? And then, um, but Vietnam is is a great place. They really get a a lot for your money there. And, and, and while I was in Saigon or Ho Chi Minh City, and it's just the largest city, and they the prices have gone up a lot. Mm-hmm. But supposedly they're coming down. I guess they had a, a bubble burst in their market there, so I guess prices are coming down. But they really hone in on foreigners there in specific areas. They get a lot for you. It's kind of shocking. They'll get a thousand dollars for a one bedroom apartment, which is like blows your mind. Mm-hmm. And then next door, or just in that same block, you could get a nice little one bedroom for you know three four hundred bucks. You know, right? It's, so it's crazy sometimes. So sometimes the rule in Southeast Asia is to not be the one negotiating prices, yeah. if 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 possible as well. Yeah, I found you know especially Thailand. You know, cost for accommodation, cost for food, you know, just being able to get a cheap SIM car that was super fast for internet. You yeah. Know, all those things were so easy. And, oh, yeah. Uh, Thailand. In the Philippines, it's not that it's expensive, but I think compared to some other places in Southeast Asia. 
It can be. Side. Yeah, yeah, Philippines can be pretty expensive with certain things, you know. And I don't know. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's just because the economy's stronger here, or if it's uh, someone was telling me that the gas prices are a lot higher here. Because mm-hmm. for instance, gas is about four dollars a gallon mm-hmm. here, I think, and then. In Malaysia, it's like a dollar sixty, a dollar fifty. Some of the cheapest gas in the world. Difference. Yeah, That's it's amazing, crazy, right? Yeah. So, so also, I, I saw one person commented on one of your vlogs, like, you know, the typical, you know, expat living a Western lifestyle kind oh, of yeah. thing, and you're like, yeah, of course. <laughs> I uh, and so that's the thing as well. In the <laughs> Philippines, you can live so uh, inexpensive uh, if you want. So there really is the options here. Sometimes you'll see expat videos like. I live on five hundred dollars a month in the Philippines, and you can absolutely. And you just might find that it sucks. So, <laughs> yeah, so or rural, right yes. out in the country, in the province. Yeah. Yes, then yeah. it's it's going to be super cheap. So, yeah. uh, you know, as long as you are really comfortable having a super chill life, not a whole lot to do, then the Philippines is an amazingly inexpensive place. But if you want anywhere near, you know, Western style accommodation and food and so on, expect to pay a bit. So what about in terms of, you know, safety? Where did you feel most safe and maybe where did you feel least safe? Least safe. So I would say I felt the most safe, probably Thailand. And and by the way, again, these are all very close in my opinion. Sure. You know, they're all in the same category. Um, but I guess maybe Thailand, just because I think it's a Buddhist country. So mm-hmm. I, And a lot of times... Thai people, they when they're kids, they have to go like to monk school, mm-hmm. so it's almost deep rooted in them. And and don't get me wrong, there's tons of crime in Thailand, but you know that Buddhist karma, mm-hmm. I think is you know it's pretty deep ingrained in their minds. But Thailand, you know, obviously Singapore is really safe. I mean, you can kind of you know go without saying. Malaysia is really safe too, I think. Um, but I would say probably Thailand, and I also I feel really safe in the Philippines too. You know, sure. but but I also don't go to. I guess really bad areas, or and I don't stay out late at night or anything. That's usually when stuff happens to people. I feel like, yeah, yeah. it's usually part. It's usually alcohol related, you know, partying related. Yeah, so. yeah. There was just a expat shot here in Cebu City. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, just last weekend actually. So there was some Filipino rapper, and <laughs> uh, I guess there was some expat guy that was being bastos rude to some of his girlfriends and. You know, sometimes expats are really stupid. Oh, wow. You know, uh, he got, o- he, he over died. here, yeah, the, wow. the, the guy shot him. So that is super rare, I, I yeah. find here. Yeah. That yeah. happens every hour in California where I'm from. Yeah. So yeah. let's just put that in perspective. <laughs> you know but, I mean? So they were drinking. It was, were they partying? They were partying yeah, and drinking course. Yeah. all night. And, yeah. you know, sometimes expats don't realize that. And I think in Southeast Asia, it is super safe. Uh, right. However, you know, if you if you kind of act, uh, you know, like fool over here, that you really put yourself oh, uh, yeah. in in, yeah. in danger. So, I feel super safe in Cebu City, certainly uh, Davao City where I am. But yeah, yeah, you know, I think foreigners also need to be a little bit careful how they treat locals as well. Yeah. So, so what about you know transportation? You, you know, where do you find that easiest, cheapest? So transportation, so I would have to give it to Vietnam. Mm -hmm. Now, granted, that's just me living in Saigon. As far as traveling maybe through the country more, I would say Thailand's really efficient. Uh, Especially in the big cities, right? It's pretty incredible. Yeah, Yeah. other than when it gets traffic jammed, it's very efficient. Um, Mm -hmm. But uh, And obviously, you know, Singapore is good in those countries. But as far as some of the other countries... Malaysia is actually pretty good too. Mm-hmm. You know, it gets really traffic jammed, but it's really efficient there as well. But I would say just pure speed um, and fluidity, Vietnam. Yeah, hundred awesome. percent. Yeah, Vietnam. It's it's. I don't know what it's, but it's not only is part of the culture. They're kind of go go go, and then mm-hmm. also there's a, uh, supposedly has the most motorbikes there per capita than any country. I don't know if that's still the case. Sure, sure. So, there's a lot here in the Philippines, especially Cebu yeah. City, but. Some of the videos I've seen of the amount of motorcycles in Vietnam. Oh yeah, it's just yeah, insane. Our uh, schools of you know of uh, motorbikes, and and you can call a grab bike, mm-hmm. and I mean they're everywhere. I swear they'll be like on the side of the road. They'll it'll it'll be there just as fast if you were to get a lot of times if you were to get on your own motorbike, which is really fast. Yeah, yeah, that's so very, that's very cool. Yeah, yeah, and very very reasonably priced too. Nice. Yeah. So it seems like sometimes they'll put motorcycles all in one lane though. Have, have you, you noticed that there? Um, 
No, no, not in a Sega. I don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> must have been some video that that yeah. I uh, saw, but that's not common. Yeah, well, at least, uh, but I, but I really only spend my time in Saigon, okay. so I, I wasn't traveling the whole country. So it could be for sure. I mean, there is definitely. I'm not really. There's not really. Yeah, that I remember. Yeah. I'm stupid. Don't listen to me. Listen to Aaron. <laughs> yeah. He knows what he's talking yeah, about. But I will say, there's one bridge I used to always take, and they did split the cars and the motorbikes on this main bridge there. Though I will give you some. Okay, maybe, that's maybe you it's saw. that yeah. one that I yeah. Saw. yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I noticed that you did not put Philippines anywhere there in terms of uh, transportation. Oh, no. I'm sorry, Philippines. No, yeah. We love you, Philippines. <laughs> but our transportation yeah. is a little bit rough. Yeah, it is. Yeah. It's just I think it's. I think it's an infrastructure thing. I also think there's a lot of cars here, you know, and sure. then, but then the the streets just aren't set up for it, you know, and it's just a, it's just a clash. So it's just it's tough. It's it, it, no, and every country has problems with traffic. It's hard. It's but um, yeah, it's pretty pretty tough here sometimes. For sure, for sure. Well, I think it's great you have so much of a perspective, you know, living in different uh, countries. You know, I think both of us. At the end of the day, we live where we really love the people and, yeah, oh, yeah. you know, where it's easy to communicate and interact with each other. That's why I'm in the Philippines. But, you know, I got to say, I really loved, uh, you know, my times in Thailand and, and definitely want to check out Malaysia, Vietnam. Oh, yeah. Some of the other places you've been as well. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah. Well, Aaron, it's been awesome having you on the channel. Yeah, thank you. Uh, you know, guys, I, I mentioned, uh, you know, Aaron has just really enjoyable uh, channel, just to kind of binge watch and check out his, you know, traveling adventures all over Southeast Asia. Oh, yeah. So hope to have you on the channel again sometime uh, in the future. And thanks for making the time today. All right. Yeah, thank you. Good stuff. Well, guys, thank you as well for taking the time to watch. If you haven't subscribed already, hit that subscribe button. But hit that subscribe button. Third time's a charm. Button. <laughs> hit that subscribe button below. And don't forget to do the same for Aaron's channel. Thank you. Take care.